um, here to present continuation of the my presentation on diseases affecting Africa. I want to turn up my video. Okay, so today I'm going to present on two diseases, which is Ebola virus disease and Lassa fever virus disease. Because these are part of disease that is endemic in Africa, some parts of Africa. So today, Ebola virus disease is a factor infection disease with great potential for bioterrorism. Ebola virus is first reported in Democratic Republic of Congo in 1976, and is being named after Ebola River in that particular country. So ever since this virus outbreak, there have been several virus reported in many African countries. As an example is Gabon, Uganda, Guinea, Liberia, Mali, South Sudan, South Africa, Senegal. Also, recent Ebola virus outbreak in 2014 to 2016 is also affected some European countries and Americans, such as Germany, Spain, and also it also affects some other country like Nigeria too. So. so the most recent outbreak is 2018, also the, the same country of DRCC, DRC. Prior to, before the outbreak of 2013, many outbreaks have originated from Central Africa, like DRC and Gabon, the Republic of Congo. What are these, there are about five organisms that causes this Ebola virus, with the recent one that makes it cease. And each of these organisms is named based on where it first occurs. The first one of them is Zara, Zara Ebola virus, which is caused, which causes most of the Ebola virus disease. Then we have Sudan Ebola, Ebola virus, which is caused Sudan virus disease. So each of them is named according to the country where it first reported. But up all the organisms of this Ebola virus species, there's particular ones that doesn't affect human, have not reported in human population, and which is rest of Ebola virus. It mostly happened with non-human primates and pigs. The most recent one is the one that is found in bats, which is called Bambule Ebola virus. It is yet unknown if it causes illness in animal or people, but it's the most recent one. Now, this Ebola virus, of course, has is the animal bone disease. It's an animal disease. It's caused by, it has, a, it has a reservoir, which is a food bath, which is taken as food bath. Then other non parameter animals, of, you can also see in the, in the white animals. Now, when this Ebola virus occurs, the person is not infected until symptoms manifested. The incubation period is within two to 21 days, but most symptoms occur within six to 11 days. There are early symptoms, which happens to be like more of like malaria symptoms, fever, similar like a type of fever, which make it difficult to identify easily. And also later, it can be causing vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea. They also cause rashes too. All these things happen within the seven days of it being infected. Then as the viral replicate increases, the person can still be lost in fluid and the person may need intervention like if having a loss in fluid and a uterine loss also increases. Now there's also some dangers about Ebola virus as the fever manifests, it can start shutting down the multiple organisms in the human body, which may also lead to death. And it happens so fast. Now, within this Ebola virus, it's mostly common in Central and West Africa, where there is a rainforest rich in diversity and conducive for emergence of infection diseases. Because rainforest that happens in forests where there's mostly there is the wild animals. Then the most, the most, the largest outbreak of Ebola virus was the one that happened in 2014 to 2016, two years. We spread from Guinea and spread to other adjacent West Africa countries, which Nigeria was part of it. It affected like 28,652 women and reported 11,325 deaths. It has been the largest outbreak to date. 
and the Ebola virus that was was it was the the cause of that outbreak is Ebola zero, which you call Ebola virus, and the outbreak also repeated in 2018. Now this table we have is the outbreak of this Ebola virus, different Ebola virus species. We can see this virus started in 1976 and continue there have been a lot of virus outbreak all this way. The most, the most largest one is the one that happened between 2014 to 2016, which affected many countries, also spread to other countries that is not Africa. And reported that the case may be 28,648 and dead 11,324. And these are the reported cases as confirmed by lab. Though there is a possibility there is also under reporting cases for the virus. Now, how does this trans how does this disease transmitted? This disease can be transmitted with direct contact with the infected animal, which can be food bat or not parameter like monkeys. It can also be direct um, contact with infected uh, human and animals. It can also be direct contact with the environment and environment contaminated with the virus. It can also be direct, it can be contact with human to human contamination because the body fluid of an infected person can also, when you come in contact with it, you can, someone can, a susceptible person can also get infected. Now the contact can also be done with dead body because the dead body of someone that is infected is also very infectious. So that is why some, when someone dies of the Ebola virus, the dead body is taken care of so that it will not affect many people. Then someone that has recovered from the Ebola virus too, can also be passing the virus through their, their semen, especially by, by oral or vaginal access contacts, as long as three months, the person can continue to um, pass the urine, even though the person has recovered. Then another way someone can get infected is also handling and consumption of wild animal as meat or hunting wild animal infected with Ebola virus. In the process of hunting it, someone can get infected. And these are the possibility, this is animal to animal transmission, spillover from, from white to human contact. This is human to human transmission. And this is the survivor, someone that survived also get infected. Now within this animal species, there's also possibility that is animal can get infected. Other animals can also get infected from this Ebola virus, not just the host. The virus can only spread an Ebola virus after they have shown signs and symptoms, meaning that if you have not shown signs and symptoms, someone cannot get infected. It's only when there is signs and symptoms someone can get infected. But the most common transmission is human-to-human -human transmission. And most times they happen in the hospital setting. Now, this is what we have. Um, this, the, apart from the outbreak of Ebola virus, there are different sorts of infection that happens within that outbreak. For example, we have the 2020, 2014 and 2015, the in, in this case from, from Guinea. And the person from there continued to spread to other countries by borders, immigration, or by traveling. So if Ebola virus survives in a dry surface for several hours, meaning that if there is a surface that is infected, the virus can stay there for as some hours before it can die. Then within the body can stay as many days as possible within the room temperature. So there are some risk factors to Ebola virus disease. One of the risk factors is when you have a high population mobility. Then another factor is a international borders because the countries that are being affected, there is a border between both of them. So when there is free, Trans free transport between the, each border to another can also transport the disease to that um, other country. Also, armed conflicts it can lead to displaced populations because one of the things that happen in one of the countries reported the Ebola virus when there is war or conflict is also make people to be displaced. In that case, it can also cause the spread of Ebola virus disease. Then poverty and cultural beliefs and practice can also be part of it. Cultural belief in in the sense that dead body, some people still practice some culture in handling dead body. So in that process, can also transmit the disease to other people. The poor health in pressure because most of the reported case, for example, 
So for example, in those areas is most times is a management of infected person in the hospital due to poor health facilities. So, and most another people that is of then there are people that is at risk of this disease, which, which are health workers and family members caring for the patient with the suspected and confirmed Ebola disease. Especially those are the those are the people that is high risk of contracting the disease because the health workers deal directly with the infected person, likewise with the family members. Then there are treatments to Ebola virus, although there is no particular drug for Ebola virus for now, but the treatment is is mainly supportive and systematic and fluid rehydration and elotrious replacement. So the treatment can also be passed and more based on what symptoms we are developing at that particular time. It can also be antibiotics too, based on your treatment. Then there are some prevention to this Ebola virus disease. And some of this prevention is personal protective equipment like health workers in the hospital guiding their cell, wearing of masks, for example, covering their cell, wearing their body and everything. Also, if someone that died too, handing out the dead body, that the person has to be protected, they wear a personal, uh, protective personal equipment, in order not to get infected. The another one is public health education. Public education is that in the sense that you have to educate people about how to take control about the virus, for example, being careful also, how they handle like barrier practices also. Then also talk about the disease, especially when they are at break of the disease. Then another one is safe barrier and pulmonary and barrier practice for an infected person. Of course, we said that the dead body of infected person can also affect someone when you come in contact with them. Then there is also a Ebola virus vaccine, although if that vaccine is against a uh, Ebola zero species because that is one that caused most of the outbreak reported in Africa. This vaccine has been given to, is yet to be completed in the human population, but it has been given to animals, which also show about some percentage of efficacy against the virus. So from all the in epidemiology of Ebola virus disease, a lot of work has been done. In the mathematical aspect of it, many people have modeled this disease in different ways in order to talk about how they can control the disease mathematically, in order to also be advised for controls to eliminate or control or eradicate the disease. So from all these mathematical models, there are different mathematical models that have developed. Some of them are spectral transmission models, some of them are within and between household transmission models. Some of them are within most model. There's also environmental transmission model. And of course, there's also smart control models. There are also different other models. But for apart from all those ones, these are the few that we choose for now. So from the model, we have we have the model reference number 10. I've also considered using a simple all the model is starting with SIR model, a simple SIR model to model the, the dynamics of Ebola virus disease neglecting the incubation period. So this model was assessed to assess the daily effective reproduction number in Guinea and some other African countries due to Ebola importation in some of the countries around. So, and they make use of special model to model this particular disease. Then after then, Saon at reference 11 also used, I also consider an SIR model for Ebola using a simple Ebola virus, let I now include the exposed class. We had seen the humans that are infected are not infectious until they develop symptoms and include the exposed class population in order to see the, how the dynamics of Ebola virus disease. With the assumption that at the beginning of the epidemics, that the total number of people in the population is equal to the total number of people that is susceptible, meaning there was no Lost Ebola cases in that um, population. And also, there is no intervention at the beginning. And this also is helpful for us. It's also helpful in calculating the basic reproduction number of Ebola virus at that particular region. But after developing this model, they further also consider a computer simulation based model using a spectral temporal epidemical modeler, which it calls them. And, and they make use of data from India to look at that model and see how it can study the dynamics of
of Ebola virus disease. Then after that, we also have another model, spectral transmission model, reference number 12, the first, also consider importation of infection and exportation of an infection within a particular area that is at risk of the infection. So what you consider here, there are three different, um, four different sustainable class here, three different human sustainable class, and one which can represent any vector. Although this model was first applied to malaria, but it, it also applied to Ebola virus disease in their work. So this S of, S of ages has to do with the human population, which is SIR model, sustainable person infected and recovery. They also consider then this particular, this particular SH has to do with people that is in the endemic country where the Ebola virus is, the one that have a suspect of age. Why the one that have a suspect of T has to do with people that is returning to their home country. So several travelers returning to the so several to their own country. The same thing goes with their infected and recovery. Now, from this model, because it's an importation and the exportation of infection, we also consider another aspect, sustainable traveler visiting an endemic area. There's someone that is from a place, visiting a place that is endemic, and also infection first travelers acquiring the infection at the place they are visited and return infections. So they study this particular model. Where this S, our S of sweet M has to do with susceptible vectors, which can be infected animals, susceptible animals, Latin animals, and also infectious animals with the after the incubation period. Now, what they did here is that Javas are subjected to the same risk as residents of endemic uh, visited country. And the number of, and also they, in, in their work, also assume that the number of visitors are small when to compare to the visited country population. And they stay there for a little short while, so therefore they do not contribute to the local cause of infection. These are based in the assumption of this model. Of course, this model was applied and the results was helpful in also to talk about how importation and exportation affect the infection of Ebola virus disease in a particular country where, where it is endemic. So after that particular model, a lot of models have considered spectral transmission models. We have a uh, Paka and Ringa consider that applied in three different countries, especially countries that are mostly affected, as mean that a single person is introduced in that in that particular country. So they take they took they took care of the looked at the within and in between three countries. So they build a method in which they can estimate the time varying reproduction number that track the effective reproduction number over time. So what they do here, they apply to three different countries and look at within between three countries and within, that's within each country and in between the, those three countries, they try to estimate their reproduction number. La et al. also model the same spectral spectral temporal transmission model. This was considered in a continuous time and space, and they consider a heterogeneous land scale within, with varying general susceptible class density. What it means is that there is a heterogeneous in their susceptible population. So, and the process they consider from susceptible to expose is a bivariate point process in their model. Then we also have the reference number nine, which also produce the same model, the same aspect of model in West Africa. So looking at the graffiti model framework, where it captured the local in, within region and long and inter-region within uh, for this, the model. Then in one particular thing about their model is that they consider the transmission within the barrier, funerary transmission of the three countries based on some practice of practice that goes on some places in Africa. Now, after that, there are different approaches they have considered in spectral transmission for Ebola virus disease. Like Chewo also considered combination of combination of phenomenal and mechanism models. So, and also we also have a reference number system, para assay et al. You use a contaminator, a contaminator framework, an agent-based model software called PSCAS. 
P-I-S-K-A-S. You use it to look at agent-based software. It's more of a computer simulation. We have most at all who consider by considering three different transmission rates in rural and urban areas in their model too. So we have Kema at all use a network approach in which the nodules are assumed to be geopolitical administrator within the in model in their own model. So after the spectral um, transmission model, there are also been a model like within household model and equals model. Like household model that within the house, people within the house had to model because most times when people are, if somebody is infected, the people within the household become, become at risk of infection because of caring for that particular person. And one of the models there is Adams that analyze the household sculpture, e SER model. So in this model, it incorporated the within household transmission. And also induce a infection induced mortality in their model. So also in their model is based on so, uh, based, their model is described based on one, the household state is a, is a deterministic e SEI model. They also consider a Markovia trans transition matrix, also consider case detection and quarantine. They also look at the growth rate and production number. Because after developing the SIE model, they extend the model to look at the effects of quarantine in their model too. Then the, the analysis is based on household size and intensity of within household transmission, how it affects epidemic risk, epidemic size, and epidemic management by quarantine. They also have a kiss, 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 co risk, and chiwork. Chiwe, Chiwe, they also consider a model, a simple SIE model, is a stochastic based transmission model. So they incorporate within house and within community of different sizes in order to look at the effects of different levels of population using a form of a large size. Then after the household models, we look at, I also look at the works that are done within host. Even though there is no much work yet in within, within host model of Ebola virus disease. But a few of the work also consider the Ebola virus with uh, the Ebola between the Ebola virus replication and um, in, um, IG antibody dynamics. They try to look within with or without passive immunotherapy. They use uh, they consider this a non-human um, parameter. They that's non-human parameter. They consider this particular model. They use a simple model to represent different interaction mechanisms. So they fit it to the selected part of the experimental data sets because they try to look at the non parameter because of the, the data set they are dealing with too. They further also look at uh, formulating another EVOS model where they look at implementation of a age specific contact network. That is, it allows individual differences relevant to the transmission process. They make use of that, apply experimental data to that too. Within that EVOS model too, we also have mass, mass shoe et al. We develop an EVOS model to, to analyze human viral load. So you obtain the data during the 2000, 2000 and 2001 Uganda Ebola outbreak. We try to look at the effect of different, different antivirals drugs on the human, uh, human, and the human body too. So there are other models of Ebola virus disease. And one of these models is model done by Vaga et al. 2014. They propose a deterministic model for transmission of Ebola virus in a complex Ebola life technology. They consider three different populations here. They consider humans, they consider animals. The animals has to do with other animals. It can be other animals that within the, apart from the bats, the bats, which is the reserve, the reserve, the reserve of Ebola viruses. So within this model for the human population, it has SER model. Of course, we have a SER which has to be susceptible class, exposed, infected, and recovery. They also have within the animals they have a susceptible and infected. Then within the also have a other species of animal where it also have a 
the bat. The bat has to do with the bat, if susceptible bats and the bats that infected it. So now one unique thing about their model is that they consider virus in the environment, contaminating environment, because we say that someone that has Ebola, that the virus can stay some hours in the surface. So you consider the virus in the environment. So it also has it that the shading, the virus is contributed by shading from the infected animal, from the infected bat, and from the infected human. Of course, we have different parameters, interpretation of their model. And the model, they did a lot of analysis in their model. They look at the uh, global stability, the stability of the model. They try to look at the local stability. They computed the reproduction number when they run the simulation to make suggestions from their work. Also, this is a further research that can be done in the work, which include optimal control and conservativeness when there is a control in the model. Then after the that particular model, we have different Ebola virus models which have been developed, and most of them consider different controls. We have a contaminated model which look at environment transmission, environmental transmission. Each of these models consider environmental transmission in different way. Some of them consider control. Like for the reference text 25, consider environmental transmission, and which also include the poor hygiene practice and consumption of the contaminated bushmeat. Because bushmeat in the sense that there are some parts of the world where the people eat the bushmeat. So the meat can get can be infected. So consumption of it can also be a means of transmitting the disease. The model also explained the occurrence of a Ebola virus in Africa. With the assumption that infected women have shared the virus in the, in the environment. So what it means that infected women share the virus in the virus. So as far as there's infected person in the environment, this continues to be because the infected woman continues to share the virus in the environment. Then we have Balai et al. who also look at investigated the demographic and social economic predictor of Ebola virus at some national level in Guinea, Liberia, and Sinai. Because these are the three particular countries that was highly affected during the 2014 and 2015 Ebola outbreak. So look at the social economic as a predictor of the Ebola virus because sometimes also taking care of uh, trying to control this has to do with a lot of things. I also have to do with like asking people to stay in one um, big quarantine or trying a lot of things. So they try to look at those predictors in the Ebola virus disease. They also have a model that consider also Look at the future record chorus of Ebola virus using the simple SIR model. In this particular model by Go et al. reference 27, it, it did not consider any intervention. Just look at using the simple SIR to look at what to forecast the future recurrence of Ebola virus. So in their model, they simulate and try to predict in the, the recurrence of Ebola in future. They will have Lee et al. who look at the impact of bats on Ebola spillover event using the um, compartment, compartment, compartment modeling scorecard and also use the Markov chain multicarrier simulation in their work. So, apart from the work, also we have people um, reference number 30, Webb and Brown, who also consider a scorecard model. Because in this case, you have to look at look at different stages of the disease, the incubation, the infections, and hospitalization. Also look at age structure in their model. Because you look at the age of the disease since the effect, since the infections too. Because the disease has been there. So how long the disease has been. You also have Ngwa and Tubo Ewuka, reference 31, which uses a deterministic model to integrate Ebola data. In this work, they consider a uh, quarantine and non quarantine state and assume that the virus can spread to different, can be spread in the community different than the healthcare system. Because they take it that when, when in the healthcare system, people that is infected is quarantined, and also in the community, some of the people that is infected is non quarantine because they have not been identified. So you look, it's find that, you look at that there is a different spread of the disease when it comes to the community and when it comes to the healthcare system. They will have Sarah et al. who also consider the basic reproduction number of three affected countries for the Ebola virus 2014. 
they use a hybrid stochastic and deterministic approach that are based on SIR model. So that is the combination of deterministic and stochastic model to look at the, the reproduction number of three affected countries in Africa during the 2014 outbreak. So also, also look at the VEM had not at all. They consider also Ebola, um, approximating Ebola emergency probability and secondary in their species. This is when a patient is undetected, Ebola was hospitalized. He uses a stochastic model to look and to study this. And in divided, this is mostly in the healthcare system. Where it, the more in their model, they divided the population in the healthcare system into patients, nurses, and physicians also. And they also consider some control, like train the healthcare system about, about the virus, how it can control the transmission in the healthcare center. So many other models have been proposed. Those also propose a model has also considered. For example, Augusto also considered the lapses of uh, the lapses and reinfection in the spread of Ebola virus using a deterministic model. She they, she assumed that in, in, a recovered individual will assume to have a disease with lapses or to become reinfected by being exposed to infectious infectious individuals. Although there is no, it is not known whether someone that recovered from Ebola virus is permanently recovered or whether it's a temporary immunity. So they consider in the situation where the person can be reinfected again. Now I also have model where they have also used a Botra type integral equation to model Ebola virus disease using the SIR type of model. So what they do there is to carry out uh, sensitivity analysis in their model to identify parameter identifiability. Identif so these are the different, um, different models that have also model Ebola virus. Also have, uh, they also consider Ebola virus, the impact of social and behavioral factors in the spread of Ebola virus. They are referenced 36 because the, 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 in this work, they feel that the human behavior also contribute to the spread of Ebola virus disease. So they also make use of Twitter. They compare Twitter data in their outbreak of disease as one of the behavior change in the spread of this Ebola virus in their work. Now, there are so many models about Ebola virus, different types of models, statistical model, any type of model, but in all these models, there's still a lot of work still on Ebola virus because this virus continues to spread. Is a virus that the outbreak will come and go based on how the, the virus is controlled in that region. So the further possibility of work is to also to look at vaccination. Even though the vaccination is not yet um, implemented in the human population, we can also study these effects of this vaccination in the spectral temporal model in order to reduce the susceptible population in that particular, especially when we apply it to a particular region. Also, also consider the, 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 the inclusion of social distancing because the, the outbreak of COVID have also shown the importance of social distancing in controlling the disease. So this also is very important to consider is also in the Ebola virus, especially when it has to do with gathering of people and practicing of some um, um, cultural practices too. Also inclusion of hygiene too, safe barrier, improvement of healthcare system because most of the virus also, apart from the community, also another place that the virus also of course, it's also a healthcare system. Also, all these things should be contributed, should be considered within and between household transmission models. They also also look at it. It's also very good to consider cooperation of human behavior in the healthcare system. Cooperation of human behavior, Ebola, 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 Ebola dead compartments, because not just studying the, the dead body, also study the the compartment and see how they affect the, trans the dynamics of the polar virus disease. Then the transmission in healthcare system, although this has been considered too, it can be also be extended within the inputs, within and within and between household model too. Then also look at there's possibility that within a region, 
more than one species of Ebola virus can also be occurring. So there should be, well, the further research can also look at more than multiple species of transmission of Ebola in one in the same region of an outbreak. There's a possibility they may have more than one species of Ebola in one region too. Then some another aspect to look at is optimal control, like vaccination, isolation, quarantine, treatment, and early detection of environmental the contamination too. Because these are good to consider in Ebola virus. See how it can control this virus, especially when there is outbreak of this disease. But early detection will help you to get people that is infected in order not to spread the disease to more in the environment. Now. Another also thing to consider is the effect of environmental change, wet and dry season. Because we feel that wet and dry, the, the, the wet and dry season is a common season we have, we have in Africa. Some places it can be rainy season and dry season. Wet has to do with rainy season. We also consider opacity, um, umbas, urbanicity because we feel that the Ebola happened most happen in the rural area, but sometimes when there is there is a importation of Ebola, it also happens in the urban areas too. They also it's also good to consider the consumption of bush meat. How does the impact of consumption of bush meat also affect the spread of Ebola virus disease? Then also it's also good to consider okay within the household heterogeneity of transmission within the household model. Like, for example, now within the household, you can have very close family, you can have relatives, you can also, it's also very good also to consider sometimes friends and relatives of someone, uh, friends and relatives of someone that is infected, their dynamics too, because of being caring for someone that is infected. There are so many other poss possibilities to consider in Ebola virus. These are just few of the research possibilities on Ebola virus disease. Despite the work that is still going on, and the virus still continue in some areas, some of them are still under reporting because it's not yet affecting a very large region, large community. So this is for now what we have on Ebola virus disease. The next one we consider is a Lassa virus, Lassa, Lassa fever. Lassa fever is caused by rats. So that is why we have this rod rodents here as to represent the Lassa fever. What is Lassa fever? Lassa fever is a life-threatening viral hemodynamic fever. It's a, it's a, it's a animal, uh, it's animal disease because it has to do with, uh, it has to do with a rodent that is a vector and it's being transmitted between the vector. There are two hosts there, the human and the vector. It's caused by Lassa virus. And the main the, the, the main reservoir of this virus is rodents, which is a most manic rat, is the form of a rat, but the particular species of rat that lives around the human residence. And this particular rat also happens during whether happens mainly during the dry season. Now, this is a major Lassa fever is a major public health and causes a uh, mortality, mortality in areas where the Lassa is endemic. The Lassa is being transmitted when through exposure to feces, urine, or body fluid, or other bodily fluid of rats, landlord carrier of the Lassa virus. Because Lassa virus is being carried by the rats. Now, these rats, this particular rat, need very large offspring during the rainy season, the wet season, and distributed very large. Then, during the dry season, it moves, it moves within the Rises the move within the human habitats, searching for food, and it's very, very is largely in West Africa and East Africa. So, how does it being transmitted? This is the rat, and this is the rat we have. This is a particular vector that carries the virus, and this vector can transmit this virus to its offspring. There is a vertical transmission and there is a horizontal transmission. Mean that it can be transmitted within the, the, the rats and can also be transmitted to the offspring. Now, it's also one of the ways that drives this transmission is that, for example, this is spread of food 
during the dry season in some African country, especially this Lassa virus is endemic in Nigeria. So during the dry season, the farmers dry their food outside, giving potential for rats to scarce for food and coming around this food in the process of eating the camp is putting their, the virus in those items there. So there is a possibility, there is a human to rat transmission, human, rat to human transmission, which can cause by blood, tissues, or exclusion or exclusion of infected rat. That's what it means that when you come in contact with the blood or tissues of the rat or exclude like feces or urine of infected rat, someone can get infected. And that is one of the primary routes of infection. Then there's also human to human transmission. It happens between the human to susceptible woman. But this is a secondary transmission, but most times it happens in the healthcare system. So there's also human to contaminating environment. Contaminating environment, we mean, for example, now the dry food that we have as this dry food being contaminated with the virus. In the process of taking care of this food, someone can get infected. Maybe touching that in the touching the virus. Then also there is also possibility also someone can get infected during the hunting of this these rats because some of these rats are like a bush meat that forms the delicacy in some parts of the Africa. This is an example of where children hunt the hunt the hunt this um, bush meat, which is a form of the rodents. Then also, there's also possibility for someone to get infected when you come in contact with the dead body or someone that has the virus. Then another possibility, there is airborne of this transmission. Airborne of transmission is the process of like sweeping or cleaning. Someone can get infected if there is virus in the environment. Now also, most of this transmission, vertical transmission, most of them must happen within the season when the this uh, when this virus when, when these rats, these rats has bleed more, when they distribute large. And one thing about this virus is that it doesn't kill the vector with that. It does not kill it and it continues to shed it all their lifetime. It does not become ill. It carry the virus and continues to shed it in the environment throughout their lifetime. Now, one of the things that drive this infection too like Lassa, bio, Lassa fever is the cultural practices. The cultural practices in the sense like boring of bush. The boring of bush is happens within the dry season, most common in Nigeria during the dry season when the farmers are preparing to do a farm work, they burn the um, bushes. And during that process, they, they drive these rats out from their natural habitat to woman in order to scarce for food in a woman residence. Now, Another thing that also drives this virus is also drying of boosters around the highway where these rats is coated in those items and contaminate them. Another thing is the storing of food. If food are not, the other thing that drives is the storing of food. If the food items are not stored in the container that is covered, like privileged canned drinks on, in a, on a hygiene warehouses where the rats can urinate in order, is another thing that drives. This infection. Another thing also that drives this infection is hunting rats and processing them for consumption. Then another thing that also drives this infection is bridge infection prevention and control practices. When there's prevention, like behavior, a woman be able to prevent this, and when there's a breach in that prevention, it also causes, it also drives this infection. So another aspect is climate and environmental impacts too. Like, for example, as we say that this disease most times mostly occur, the outbreak is more during the dry season between November to April in Nigeria. And Nigeria is one of the endemic areas of Lassa virus. Now, like Lassa virus was discovered in 1969, and it was it happened in a town called Lassa in Benue, the north central, the north part of Nigeria. It's a town called Lassa, so it was named after the town, Lassa fever. Now, after there is also prevalent in a scenario, is also in Liberia, is also in Mali, is also in Kutuba, is also in Guinea. 
Now it affects every age and gender. Everyone is affected equally. So about 400,000 people are affected here of Lhasa. About 5,000 to 10,000 die here in Sub-Saharan Africa. The case, the case fertility ranges is between 15 to 20% that of course in that. Now the Lhasa virus have incubation period of one to 21 days with average of 10 days. Then about 80% uh, from 100% person that hundred percentage of people that is infected, 80% are symptomatic, while 20 are symptomatic. And apart from that, less than 20 results in a severe sickness. So what it means that people that have this disease and does not seem, have symptoms of restraint symptoms are 80%, there are more. So that makes it very difficult even to identify these people very early because of no, no strange symptoms. Now, any symptom of Lassa has to do with, it has to do with, uh, it has a malaria kind of symptoms, has fever, it also has sore throat, body pains also cause uh, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, and cough. And looking at these symptoms and what we look at in Ebola virus, see there's a similarity between both of them. Then another thing that can cause is also breathing, combustion, mental, utter, uttered mental health, deafness, yes, because out of people that recover, 25% of them that survive the Lassa virus result to deafness. Then if like, within the infected, the person that has the Lassa virus usually die within 14 days of onset of symptoms. So, so and also Lassa virus also comes abortion with in pregnant women and cause death too, especially when they're in their third trimesters of their pregnancy, can cause abortion. And also the extended is also the virus also transmit to the, the, the transmit through the placenta to the newborn baby, which also cause mortality death in children, in newborns. What are the treatments? There is treatment of this um, Lassa fever. Now that treatment is a drug called Labibinia. This drug is given. This drug is potential, it's very active. It is given any time of the virus within the first six days someone is infected. If not, it will not be very effective in, very effective against the, the fever. And it's also, very, it's, it's also very effective for people that is less than 45 years for it to have a good outcome. When there's a, a delay in this treatment and people that is more than 45 years, the result is not always a good one. It may, the person may result in a very serious case of the, of, the, of the disease. There are so many ways that this virus can be prevented. And one of the ways, of course, has to do with public health education because most times where this virus happens, it happens in rural areas where people don't even have access to sometimes medications. And most times in those areas too, because the similarity with other disease, they find it difficult to identify the, the case early. So one of the prevention is public health, and this public health education is like promoting good community hygiene and educating people in high risk area about the ways to decrease the rodent population because that is the vector that causes carries the virus. Then another way is also to strengthen Lassa fever surveillance and laboratory capacity because when it comes to laboratory capacity, there is no a lot of there within the West Africa. I don't think there is up to more than three labs that take um, carry out this uh, Lassa fever test. So most time, when someone is infected, it takes like three or four days to get the risk, try to take the result and bring it back. So that also affects if they, they will strengthen the laboratory capacity that will help help also to identify someone that is infected early in order to treat that person. The other way is the proper use of protective personal equipment isolation precautions. This is very important in healthcare system. And for example, most in Nigeria, most of the people that has been affected are mostly healthcare workers, doctors and nurses. Then another, another thing is also the drug, the last drug that is being given improving access, access to it because most times the drugs are not accessible. 
Most times the drug are accessible only within the healthcare system, it's not accessible to communities, especially when the, 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 the disease is endemic. Then there's another potential in prevention that's like, let's say, future uh, prevention, which is development of vaccine, because there's no vaccine yet for Lassa, although there is initiative for that, but there's no vaccine. The another thing is also to look at the rodent's control. Can we actually control rodent? Possibility, which you don't know. So that is also that is another thing to look at. Because most times, the, the most of the practices of reducing the rodents result to like using some chemicals, uh, which may also be dangerous to human population. The other way also to potential prevention is as accelerating the development of rapid diagnostic tests. This is like having a test, carrying out a test that can easily have um, have results immediately in order to treat someone that is infected. Because if someone that is infected is, accept, is uh, identified early, it will help to prevent the spread in the population. And another aspect, potential prevention is also funding. Funding to develop uh, antiviral against this disease. Now, this is uh, the, in Africa, how the Lhasa is being spread in Africa. Now, what we look at here, we see that it just happened within a particular region in Africa. The blue has to do with the country where it's endemic, and the, the green has to do with countries where there, there is a few reported cases, a periodic assumption of the virus. Now, if we look at this, Nigeria is endemic, and we have Guinea, Sinai, and Liberia. Now, within this, this, there is other borders within this country. They are not yet. They are only having few cases. So this is the way it's being distributed in Africa, the Lassa virus. There, there are some places that is still unknown, the virus in Africa. So looking at this, it's not affecting much, much countries, but cases of Lassa is, is especially where it's endemic, is happens yearly, is a periodic outbreak that happens every year. Now, from that, we also have, so we look at the mathematical models of Lhasa fever. There are lots of work on mathematical models of Lhasa, and there continue to be work going on in order to eradicate the virus, in order to control, in order to eliminate the virus. And one of these work is Ojo Etor, uh, who consider is a model because we say it is a human compartment and also has to do with vector. There are two hosts there. So most of the model consider the two hosts, which has to do with the human and the rodent population. So for the human population, make use of SEIR model. And for the rodent, we make use of SI model because we say that the virus remains, the rodents continue to share the virus and is never ill. So there is no recovery. For the, for the rodents being infected. So this is their model, which is a determinist model. So they make some assumption here, and some of the assumption here is that there is no indirect transmission. But we know that most of the things that drive this virus is indirect transmission, that environmental coming in contact with things that are being contaminated with the virus. Then, so, the assumption is that the only people can only get infected when they come in contact with direct contact with the rodents and infected woman. So they study this model and look at the, the stability of their um, the system, also look at the production number of the model. Then after them, they'll look at, then there will be other model which consider Lassa model with that environment. And one of those models is Honor et al. Anna et al. also consider uh, a deterministic model, SIR and SIR. SIR has to do with human compartment. Why SIR has to do with rodent, compartment, rodent population? So meaning that for the human um, population, they have a sustainable class, they have infected and have recovery. Then for the rodent, they have sustainable and have infected. So they, they make this a varying population in the sense that the, the recruitment rate depends on the total population of each of these hosts. They try to investigate the effect of social economic class on Lassa fever transmission dynamics. They will have Onwara et al. 
who develop a control sex culture Lhasa model. What you mean that you try to divide the woman population into male and female. So you subdivide the woman population into male and female. Then also consider uh, the natural reservoir as a form of dominant reservoir and active reservoir host. So the dominant reservoir is more like a sustainable rodent and why the active reservoir is more of like infected rodents too. They will have Farana and Ayola. They consider a mathematical model where they take two classes of infected rats, two classes of rats. The rats they consider here is that they took it and they may be rats inside the house, they may be rats outside the house, that is in the bush, with the assumption that there's someone can get infected through the rat inside the house, and someone can get infected through the rat outside the house. Of course, the human population is SIE, SEIR model. So they try to look at which of these particular um, subpopulation of the rats contribute more to this disease. They will have Ogabi et al. who also developed a mathematical model. They try to look at mathematical model in another part of Edo State. Edo State is is a is a is a is a, a state in Nigeria where the disease is highly endemic than every other state. So they try to look at this the transmission, develop a, a model to look at the transmission in that particular area, and which they advocate for health policy that will keep the production number below one. So I, I, these are the few work from the basic model of Lassa model with that contaminating environment. Now, when it comes to contaminating environment, which is the main thing that drives this virus, we have Bawa et al. Would consider a model, we consider S I model. In this S I model, the H has to do with the human compartment, why the R has to do with the rodent. So, what you consider here is a sustainable and infected human. You also consider here the infant reservoir and also consider adult reservoir. So what do you mean that there's infant one? So you feel that the adult one is one that carries the virus. They also consider virus in the environment. This virus environment is contributed by adult reservoirs and the infected human. Then we also have a more, a more lie at all. A more like he extended the work by Honora. He extended by work by incorporating contamin um, virus contaminating environment with the assumption that male and female can contribute to the reservoir too. Likewise, also, also look at active reservoir and sexual interaction with opposite cells too. So that is it. Then another particular another model that also consider another contaminating environment in another way is. Madume and Tuevo. Madume and Tuevo consider SEIR, SEI, and W model. In this case, they consider two contaminating environments. And one of these two contaminating environments is a surface environment and aerosol transmission because we say that some, someone can also be infected by aerosol transmission, maybe in the process of cleaning or sweeping. So they try to capture, they capture woman to woman transmission rodent to woman transmission, they capture rodent to rodent transmission, environment to woman transmission, aerosol to woman transmission, and environment to rodent transmission. So these are few of the work considered in contaminating environment. According to their model also, they made suggestions from their results, also advocate for further research that can also be considered in their work. So this is an example of a glass model with a contaminating environment. From this model, we can see that the R has to do with the rodents and why this has to do with the human compartment. Then this is a contaminated environment, contaminated environment, that's environment that is contaminated already. So what they have here is that they assume that there's a logistic, there's a logistic growth rate for the sustainable uh, rodents because their, their population, their growth depends on what the, the environment. So there is a carrying capacity of the environment. So in the, in the force of infection, they consider that the human can get infected by the human interaction, can get infected by the environment. It can get infected by environments, which also have the carrying capacity of the virus in the environment. It can get infected by infected rodents. 
but for the rodents, it can only get infected by a human and the rodents to rodents. Of course, we know that in the process of rodents, one of the limitations of this model is that in the process of rodents eating the casting for food, it can also eat the food that are being contaminated by other rodents by environment. So the one of the limitations in this work is that there is a possibility of this, or there's a possibility of rodent to environment contamination. So, so this model was analyzed and also look at the stability of the model and reproduction number, and also present a result from their work. Now, after the this model, so many models have considered optimal control model. Not just optimal control model, also look at cost effectiveness of those controls. Some models also have considered cost effectiveness, but few, only few that have done cost effectiveness on Lassa fever and dynamics. And one of the people that have done optimal control is Maria Etor, reference 58, investigates the feasibility of rodent control. Look at rodent control for managing the spillover Lassa virus from rodent to human and with horizontal transmission component. So they make some assumption. The assumption is that the contact rate between the rodent and human is positively, positively related to rodent population density. And also, they say that virus prevalence in rodents is positively related to rodent population density. What it means that for you to have a high um, prevalence in rodent population, it has to do with the density of the rodents in their population. They implement in their model annual density, con uh, density control, continuous density control, and rodent vaccination. Remember, their model is all about rodent control. So they are looking at if there is annual control, continuation, continuous control, and rodent vaccination. Although there is no vaccination, but they look at what vaccination can do if there is a vaccination for the rodents. Then we also have a, a job at all who consider look at the optimal control or where they develop SEIR and SI optimal control model. In their work, they consider disease public health education, which they call disease education and information. They also consider sanitation, safe food storage, because to say that if food they are stored very well, it can also prevent the loss of spray. They also look at the safe food storage and preparation, clean water viability and treatment for the loss of patient. Early treatment also prevents the spread of the virus. So they establish the cost effectiveness of their control strategies, not just developing an optimal control model. They also establish the cost effectiveness of those controls. Which of these controls is most is most cost effective? That's one of the things they look at their model. They also consider there are another optimal control model we will also look at is a Peter et al. Peter et al. consider optimal control model where they consider the use of condoms, publication of getting the environment with pesticide, any treatment and use of indoor pesticide spray as a control for um, trans uh, lesser fever transmission dynamics. What it means that they look at the use of condom because we say that, that the virus can somehow also can be transmitted. There is a literature that can also be transmitted through the surgery um intercourse also have the environment that is contaminated. They look at if you get in the environment, how can you control the spread of the disease? Of course, the treatment is if the treatment is given early, how can you control it? Then they also look at the use of indoor residue spray as a control. Now, apart from this, these are the few work on optimal control. We there are numerous few uh, works on optimal control of Lassa fever model. Then another aspect on Lassa fever model, which also being considered is non-autonomous Lassa fever model. Why non-autonomous Lassa fever model? Because, for example, in Nigeria, the model is, is the disease is more within November to, to April, the upper year. So meaning that there is a season. So they try to look at seasonality. They also some also try to look at temperature. Does it have effect? And does the rainfall also have effect, especially in Cameroon? when they carry out a special analysis of data, data fever data for human cases. This was done from the time they tried to look at the data from 1965 to 2007, how the temperature, rainfall, vegetation affect dynamics in Cameroon. That is considered in reference 61. Then Ibrahim and Dinas also study 
a time periodic model. In their model, they consider SIE model for human population. They consider SEI for rodent population. Now, in their model, they consider that the rodent birth rate is a periodic. They also consider the carrying capacity of the environment is also a periodic. That is respect to rodent population because they feel that rodents produce more during the rainy season. So they look at the current capacity because of the time that the virus usually occurs most. Then in their model, they divided the infected compartment into three, mild, severe, and treated infected human. They also con uh, consider logistic growth of their logistic growth of the rodent population, which now depends on carrying capacity of the, the rodent population. Then after they do that, they extended that particular work to incorporate quarantine as intervention in their work. Now, in this particular work, now they are considering quarantine intervention in their work. Then there is a, then the, in the rodent population, they now divided the, the logistic growth rate into two, into two in the sense that in sustainable class, there is a, there is a growth, a, a, a growth rate coming to sustainable class. There's also growth rate coming to the infected rodents because we say there is a vertical and a horizontal transmission, meaning that it can, an infected rat can transmit to the offspring direct. So they consider that boy is in a logistic aspect of the growth. So that is they also analyze this model, both the sensitivity analysis of the model, also look at the sensitivity, high sensitivity with the parameter. I also consider they also fit this particular this particular model to the data from Nigeria. Now, apart from this, there is also model that have developed stochastic modeling of Lassa fever virus, and which is also considered by Hamel reference 64. Now, these are few models of Lassa fever model. There are a lot of them going on. Actually, my postdoc is all about Lassa fever model, because I'm actually working on Lassa fever model as my postdoc research. Now, there's possibility of different research to do in Lassa fever. And one of them is uh, modeling the multiple routes of transmission, which also have considered what is possibility of doing that with effect of seasonality. There's different routes of transmission, but it's considering seasonality in the model. Then also another thing is a proper sanitation, intervention strategy that integrates the multiple transmission. What it means that when you're having the different routes of transmission, also look at it, what are the intervention strategies based on that multiple transmission that are being considered. Then another thing to consider in Lassa fever model, which is there's no few work much on that is cost effectiveness, cost effective analysis of controls that you have come about, controls you have listed that how, how, how effective is their cost. That is another aspect to consider in Lassa fever model. Then another thing to consider is transmission of density relation and percentage of chronically infected animals. Because you know, because we are after, we are interested in the human population, but there is also possibility they may be also be chronically infected at wild animals because the the rats is being affected as a vector. There is a possibility there are also other species, other animals can also be infected by the virus. Also, there is literature to that too. The another thing to consider is ace cultures. Why are we considering the ace culture? Because it affect affect different because the rate at each attack, attack is also in different age groups. For example, say that treatment is very important when it's due to people below 45. So that means already there is a specific age that's being considered. Then another thing we can consider is like two cells model. Why are we talking about two cells model? Because of sexual transmission of the LASA. And because also it's prevalence in pregnant women. We can consider a model where we can now separate a pregnant women and other population to see the effects of, see how it can help in controlling of last fever. The another thing which I also have mentioned before, vaccination is rodent immunization. Can we actually immunize a, a rodent? I think that can also be considered, especially those that is effect veterinary medicine, who deals with direct with um, animal, they look at the vaccination of rodents in order to reduce the spread of this Lassa virus. So there are a lot of work going on and works continue to go on too. 
So these are the few um, talk on Lassa fever, um, Lassa fever transmission. So this is the references that we have for this presentation. References from the work, the presentation I have done. So and uh, for today, thank you for listening. I'm open for questions.